welcome back welcome back to the channel welcome back to my goblin cave i'm not sure what to say here so hi uh welcome back to the channel i have tried so many times to figure out how to intro into videos and i still am hopeless i can't do it so i guess i'm just gonna jump straight into explaining what this video is and why I, i'm making it so i guess um this was like a trend on youtube like five maybe six maybe even seven years ago i'm not really sure it was a while back i re i started watching youtube consistently again around the time that this trend was popular the trend being childhood trauma explained or childhood trauma iceberg or something along the lines of that these videos were like really popular on channels that report on the creepy stuff on the internet like ARG analysis channel or channels that typically would analyze ARGs or talk about unfiction projects or uh, would report on like weird stuff disturbing things from around the internet you know if you've seen the channels you know what I'm talking about so yeah Essentially, this was like a trend and obviously it's a very outdated trend and basically my reasoning was, well, this is a fresh start. We're starting over here. But anyways, I just wanted to do my own because a lot of these videos often covered the same stuff, which fair enough like these things are obviously universally terrifying to children the reason i wanted to kind of do my own is because i was uh, a bit of a i wouldn't even say like weird kid i was highly sensitive i was a highly sensitive child and so the things that disturbed me were not necessarily your typical horror stuff some of it was obviously like you know i saw watership down when i was in primary school and oh yeah it, it scared me at the time i love watership down though and i've read the book and and i'm a huge fan of the watership down uh, usually the content of those childhood trauma icebergs childhood trauma explained etc etc videos were like the same things were coming up over and over again valid things that are scary <laughs> to one person are probably going to scare another person in probability hey maybe you'll hear something from my list and be like finally someone said it but anyways let's just kind of dive straight in first topic of the agenda on my list is a specific goosebumps episode anyone who grew up in the 90s and probably early 2000s as well has you know seen goosebumps probably been scared by a few episodes you know there's um the haunted mask is one that people often cite or slappy the dummy there's a werewolf one that has like a really pretty gnarly jump scare in it tower of terror but the episode that really got to me and i would probably class as a, a form of trauma because it <laughs> it fucked me up for a while my parents basically wouldn't let me watch goosebumps alone again after seeing this episode but anyways the episode in question is welcome to camp nightmare if you haven't seen goosebumps welcome to camp nightmare is somewhere in the first season i think uh essentially the story of welcome to camp nightmare in cliff notes is like this kid is going to a summer camp boys and girls get split up into separate camps and then stuff starts happening that is weird i guess one of the kids gets bitten by a snake when they go to their bunks i'm pretty sure and then i think he disappears in the middle of the night and the next day the camp counselors are like oh he's fine he's fine he's fine don't worry about him don't worry about him and eventually they're like who what are you talking about you're crazy and there's like a cryptid urban legend kind of thing about the camp that there's like a, a werewolf or a monster of some sort and there's like a forbidden bunk that the children aren't allowed to go to the camp counselors are generally just abusing their authority you know and the whole time they're like gaslighting this this kid anyways so this stuff happens he eventually sneaks out to see the forbidden bunk or whatever um i think he encounters the the monster anyways at the end it's revealed that all of this was a test the counselors are like whatever billy i don't know the kid's name good job billy you passed the test and he's like a test a test for what so it turns out that it's a test and this is the part that fucked me up okay so they're like yeah it was a test we're training you to see if you're ready 
to go help the the war, help the effort on this strange alien planet called Earth. You're going to see a theme that continues on from here of the things that really disturbed me as a kid. But the concept that like there's obviously a like a, a negative or evil or bad or they view us as bad alien force out there that looks exactly like us humans coming here I don't know it gave me a mild existential crisis though because then I was like am I on earth am I on another planet am I human I don't know I'm so confused it just really did a number on my poor little brain that's one of them welcome to camp nightmare by goosebumps streaming on Netflix I'm not really sure actually so the second one has a kind of like a story and it also ties into the one after the second one. If I can set the scene here, I'm a kid. I have a cousin who's a few years older than me and I have a little brother who's a few years younger than me. We used to go to my auntie and uncle's house a lot and my cousin had this rec room. This is where we are, we're in the rec room. He and my brother are watching boy stuff. I am on the other side of the room, probably playing Spyro the Dragon on PlayStation 1. They are watching the comedy movie Basketball. I wasn't watching the movie. I was off doing my own things. I had zero context of what I was about to see. And I turn around, I see the scene. And if you've seen the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. The scene, the scene with the, mm, mm, you know, the, where this happens. So if you haven't seen Basketball, it's a comedy movie by the South Park guys. It's, they invent a sport that's like baseball and basketball mixed together with like their own little flavor on it, being that when the team is playing defense, they are allowed to do this thing like psych out the player on the offensive side. And they do that by gross out gags, just anything that would throw them off, like off, throw them off their game. And so the scene was this guy, and I didn't know this, has a prosthetic hand in place of his actual hand. So he pulls up his middle finger and of the prosthetic hand and, and just chops it off. Blood, fake blood. I didn't know that though. Fake blood splurts out. Not knowing that that was fake. I don't know. It just kind of upset me. Um, I used to get really queasy. Uh, and nauseous seeing gore and I got the um, queasy nauseousness. Uh, obviously I've seen it now and it's aged horribly. So that brings me into the second one because we've already had the scene set. I'm at my cousin's house again. Same rec room, probably playing more Spyro the Dragon because that's literally all I cared about. So my cousin and my brother, again, are watching a movie, but this time I may be a little more interested because it's an anime movie. It's the animated Tekken movie. So uh, I think it follows the plot of the first game. Essentially, they're a bunch of uh, world-class fighters. They're put on this island and they have to fight their way to get to the, the big guy, the guy that put on the competition. I didn't think to look back and make myself more aware of the story, um, basically because I didn't want to. Okay, it's a violent fighting movie. And there's one specific scene where essentially there is a giant dinosaur and he's running to attack someone else. And the fighter man steps in and essentially like grabs the, the dinosaur by its top and bottom half of its jaw and just... Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, rips his head in half, yeah. It was disgusting. I personally was just grossed me out so much. And I've, again, since watched that movie, I still think that scene's kind of gross. But I'm also noticing now that maybe it has left me with a lingering anxiety around jaws being ripped off because I think like there's a movie called Mirrors where a lady rips her own jaw off hated it disgusting hated it and there's a scene in like the american remake of the grudge where a lady's jaw kind of falls off disgusting hate it what the fuck so gross have you seen the french movie <laughs> irreversible there's a scene where a guy is having his face bashed in jaw is breaking in real time hate it disgusting didn't finish that movie so that's the final part of this section on things that my cousin had on tv that i saw so the next one 
It's kind of like a low-hanging fruit because this is one that gets referenced a lot in a lot of people's videos, but I think it's important to mention because it fits into a certain theme of what I was like as a child. So it's the never-ending story. Obviously, there's like a laundry list of things to take issue with that movie, like as far as emotional pain caused by it, you know, there's the horse dying in the sinking mud uh, place. There's the sphinxes who shoot laser beams out of their eyes and kill that knight. But what really got me the most was Gamork or the nothing, the big like villain of the film. Not because he was scary to look at, but because I found the concept of being nothing or like sucked into nothingness and ceasing to exist or like being consumed by nothingness, I that didn't sit well with me and it obviously compiled on my existential dread that I clearly experienced as a child for some reason. That's uh, the trauma that The Never Ending Story gave me. And the next one is kind of, did you ever see the show Freaky Stories? Uh, it's an American show, I'm pretty sure, but it was on Australian TV on the ABC after school every day. It's like a, a, a cartoon series that kind of explores urban legends, just stuff like that. It often starts off each story with, this is a story that happened to a friend of a friend of mine. This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine. Because obviously that's how urban legends survive is through word of mouth and, and somewhere down the line it has to be true. Anyways, just the whole thing with urban legends is kind of like a weird, a weird concept for a child. <laughs> I uh, I just I didn't know urban legends weren't real they weren't true stories so when they say this story happened to a friend of a friend of mine I was like that story happened to a friend of a friend of theirs obviously I don't even remember anything that happened in the episodes except for like one where a woman had like a, a beehive hairstyle and she started getting like headaches then it turns out that a spider had laid eggs in her hair and they were like biting her head and, and that was giving her headaches. I'm an idiot, <laughs> I'll admit it. This is not in any chronological order because basically my childhood is a, a long blur of events and I don't know where they place on the timeline. Unfortunately, my brain is absolutely scrambled. The next one is also probably on a lot of lists and justified because it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> it's M. Night Shyamalan's classic film, Signs. Um, everything about that movie scared the shit out of me. And I credit this movie a lot because it was my first horror movie that I saw that I enjoyed. And it scared the shit out of me, obviously. It wouldn't be on this list otherwise, but it was the first horror movie that I was like, being scared is fun, actually, sometimes. I'm actually a huge M. Night Shyamalan fan. Another topic for another video, perhaps. So... Obviously, a lot of people cite the scene at the party that they play on the news with the alien just like straight up walking just just past. But that's not the scene that bothered me. So the scene that really stuck with me the most and maybe still has given me a minor complex in my adulthood is the scene where they like look outside and they see just like the silhouette of something standing on the like the roof of the brother's little granny house, granny flat thing absolutely cannot look out windows at nighttime anymore. Maybe that's also in part with what was potentially my first sleep paralysis episode as a child where one night I rolled over and went to look out my bedroom window and so the street light, my bedroom was on the street light side and so like anything that was like right up at my window would silhouette and I remember one night rolling over and there just being a figure of a human at my window. I think now in my adulthood with the power of foresight, is that the right word? With ret retrospective powers, that was probably sleep paralysis. Up until maybe before I had sleep paralysis in my adulthood, I thought there was maybe a real person standing there. Now, <laughs> this is another tangent for another day, but it also could be a false memory. I'll explain maybe later. But yeah, cannot look outside windows at nighttime because the thought of seeing a silhouette of something that shouldn't be where it is, terrifying. Hate it. No, thanks. So the next one on the list is kind of a weird, maybe exclusively Australian culture thing. Americans, you may, and others of not Australian nationality, 
you may not know what the fuck I'm talking about here. But Paul Jennings is an author of children's books. They were like a really big part of the curriculum when I was in primary school. For some reason, I've got a few because these books hold up. So I've got Undone, which is one you may have read in school. Um, I read this one in school. This is actually my copy from when I was in primary school, Uncovered. Um, he has a whole series of Un books. There's some disturbing stories in those books. I'll tell you that now, but it's not the stories in those books that bothered me or even Skeleton on the Dunny, which is like his big breakout story, which scared me for maybe like, I don't know, a few years. I was scared of going to the toilet and absolutely would never ever use Outhouse ever. I'd rather piss myself. It's actually from the Round the Twist series. So Round the Twist was a television series based off of stories that Paul Jennings wrote. Long explanation to get to that point. You, If you've like grown up in Australia in the 90s or early 2000s, there's a high chance you know around the twist. Long story short, it's like a, an anthology-esque series where it's about a family and they live in an old lighthouse that is haunted and weird stuff just seems to happen to them for some reason. So the episode that messed me up is again, not a very scary one for certain types. It may be the most scary one like me, for example. So there's an episode, oh, what is it called? It's like grandpa's eyes or something along the lines. I will include it here on the screen. I don't really remember much of the plot. I know that they like grew lemon trees in their yard. There was a, a reason they grew lemon trees in their yard. Maybe they were this man's trees. Anyways, so the daughter in Around the Twist finds a fox skin, like a one to be worn as fashion. She puts it in her closet one night and she's, you know, sleeping soundly and she hears like the sound of a fox. I'm not gonna make the sound cause it's like a high pitched kind of whimper. She hears it and where is it coming from? Obviously inside her cupboard. She opens a cupboard and the fox skin is alive and just kind of whimpering and it doesn't have any eyes. <laughs> it doesn't have any eyes. And so she has to feed it lemons from the lemon tree so its eyes will grow back. Linda, look. <laughs> it's got blue eyes. Yeah, does that sound like it would disturb you? Because that episode just unsettled me in a weird way that I can't quite put words to still. Sound off in the comments if that episode fucked you up too. As I get a bit further into this list, some of the topics are more not so much things from my childhood. They're more from my like teen years, including like 18, 19, specifically because they are things that have just kind of stuck with me still. And I wanted to include them because I don't class myself as an adult. So therefore it can be on the list because I make the rules because this is my channel and this is my video. And the next one is the ghost ship opening scene. I've stated several times so far that I was sensitive to gore. Did I actually say that? Well, you should know <laughs> that I'm sensitive to gore. The ghost ship opening scene takes place in a big ship, kind of not unlike the Titanic. It's just editing me here. I just wanted to throw this in because I didn't even think about it. But since we bring up the Titanic, that scene at the end of the Titanic with all the bodies in the water where the eyes are wide open and like pale and that also gave me nightmares a lot when I was a kid. Okay, bye. And it's haunted or something. This is not one I've revisited because it stuck with me. There's like a, a line that is on the ship fastening something to something else, ship things. And it comes loose and just kind of like slices through this whole party of people. And it's like taut wires, so obviously it slices everybody in half. And it's just like this scene of severed bodies, uh, like top halves crawling towards their bottom halves and etc. Disgusting. And I love horror movies, but I still cannot cope with gore. That leads me into <laughs> I love how I've listed this. I'm a genius. That leads me into Rotten.com or other shock sites from the early 2000s. Obviously, I didn't seek this out. I think you can tell by my track record so far that I would not go looking for things to disturb me. This came to me in forms of my dad. Yeah, 
and my best friend in the later years of high school. My family was quite late to getting a computer and internet and stuff. When we did get an internet and computer and stuff, my dad was like getting into all the things that you do on the internet and computer and stuff. And this involved a certain little fun thing from the early 2000s called chain emails. And that was like the original way to meme. <laughs> you can quote me on that. It was, it was how virality worked in the pre-social media age. So yeah, you'd get chain emails um, and then your friends would send them to you and then you were tasked with the objective of sending them to your contacts and so on and so forth. And one day my dad calls me into the computer room because of course we had a computer room. It was the early 2000s and he goes, have a look at this. And he opens up an email that his mate has sent him and it's literally just um, a real picture from a car crash of a real human cut in half and his entrails, etc., just all over the pavement. Thanks, Dad. As I said, I had a friend who was, now that I have the distance from my teen years to reflect on this, she was very disturbed and she would often send me links in through MSN chat, etc. Disgusting, horrible things. Um, I have seen one man, one jar, and I wish I could not have seen that. So the next one on the list is a, a lesser known Stephen King B movie. Not B movie as in like Jerry Seinfeld B movie, but like B grade. Um, it's called The Langoliers. Sound off in the comments if The Langoliers gave you trauma because it gave me trauma. So The Langoliers is a short story written by Stephen King, um, adapted into a mini series that was then released as a movie. The Langoliers is set with a group of people going on a flight and they fall asleep during the flight and they wake up when they've landed. During the flight, they had crossed through at a dimensional warp of some sort. And so now they are in a different dimension that looks basically identical to like where they were, except that they're the only humans left. And they have to basically find a way to get back to their dimension. Now, there is an issue. <laughs> what? Me explaining movie plots. So, there's one person on this in this group who speaks of these creatures called the Langoliers, and I think it's the lawyer character, and I think he believes in them because he believes they'll eat lazy people. I'm pretty sure. I'm not gonna check. You can find out on your own if you want to, if you really must. One character's like, there's these things called the Langoliers, and what they do is they eat matter. So they eat like the fabric of space and time and atoms and, and everything. It, they eat every puzzle piece of existence. Well, guess what dimension they happen to be in? Yep, the one with the Langoliers in it. And so they're on a race against the clock. The movie itself, not very scary. It's very dated at this point. Even at the time, the 3D effects were not much to be desired. But again, existential child, probably gonna be bothered by the concept of like, things like organisms that eat the fabric of life. I was 15 the first time I went on a plane. I think there was probably a, like at least a tiny part of me who was like, I'm not going to fall asleep because I will not be one of those dumb asses that end up in the Langoliers universe. So on that, probably like in my mid teens, I would say got very into um, just consuming information as one is known to. Am I sounding like an alien right now? I read a lot of Wikipedia articles is what I'm trying to say. I would go on tangents. So there'd be like themes to the Wikipedia articles I would read. And I got really into a certain theme of things that could like potentially end all of mankind. I, you know, there was a point where I'd read all about Ebola and like yellow fever and bot flies and that parasite that burrows into the brains of other insects, you know, like I had a thirst for knowing things that usually didn't sit well with me. But anyways, that brings me to having discovered a certain piece of scientific technology that some of you may know of called the Large Hadron Collider. I'm not gonna pretend that I understand what it does. I think the cliff notes of it would be that it's like this giant machine that shoots particles at each other at such high velocity that 
they're hoping it will form new atoms and stuff I think I read about that and then I also happened to read about the conspiracy theory around the Large Hadron Collider which was the theory of like 2012. I made a video on my channel about it that has since been removed because it just wasn't very good (laughs) but 2012 conspiracy theories there was one And it was that the Large Hadron Collider is just going to create tiny black holes in the universe. And they'll get bigger because that's what black holes do. Yeah, I (laughs) had a bit of existential dread yet again. Are we seeing the theme here? Like black holes being erased into nothingness, you know? So I was just dead ass terrified that we were going to all be sucked into a black hole at some point. Obviously, it's 2022, so that didn't happen. So (laughs) I mentioned briefly before about potentially having a false memory. It sounds insane, but I have at least one confirmed false memory that is a memory that never actually happened. This may very well be another one because... I have researched this particular movie that I'm about to talk about and I have never been able to find it. This is actually goes back to like when I was quite young again. So my auntie was babysitting me and my brother. She was watching a horror movie. I will tell you what I remember about the horror movie. I don't think it exists. The movie was about this dog. Not Cujo, please don't say Cujo. I watched Cujo like two weeks ago. It's not Cujo. Through some circumstance, the owner dies and the dog escapes. I, it's really hard to string together the actual sequence of the movie, but I remember there was like a kid and I think he starts going to therapy because he found the dead body that had been partially consumed by this dog. And so this kid starts going to therapy. And then basically the story around the movie is that this dog is a ghost dog now. And it's not the movie Ghost Dog. And it's like trying to kill this psychiatrist, I think, from memory. What I do remember is that it attacked in the shadows. So there's like a scene where the therapist is like driving and he looks in his rearview mirror and there's nothing there. And then all the street lights go out. And then he looks in his rearview mirror and it's there. And then he crashes his car, I'm pretty sure. And then he winds up in the hospital, in the emergency room. And they're like wheeling him through on a gurney. And the lights go out in the hospital. And I think the dog gets him. And that's all I remember. So if this is a real movie, I would love if anyone could tell me what it is. If it's not a real movie, do you think I should tell my psychologist about the fact that I have false memories? That's my childhood trauma explained iceberg etc i guess you can comment if you had some similar things i don't know i don't really like asking people to do anything they don't want to do i mean if you wanted to validate my trauma i'm not gonna stop you i'm gonna talk a bit now about I want to call it like my roadmap for the channel. So essentially, I would like to get a Discord server going as soon as possible. I kind of don't know the ins and outs of running a Discord server. So it's very, very basic. The Patreon will be like your access to the Discord server. I think also down the line, depending on reception and depending on if anyone wants to do this, I would like to do live streams, not like playing games or anything, because I've discovered from trying to stream a few times in the past that I cannot game and and talk at the same time. But I just think like maybe like chats with my community. I would like to do that somewhere down the line. The next video I plan on recording is actually talking about some books that I've read. I'm thinking maybe I would like to inside the discord server have like a a separate chat like a book club and maybe that can tie into the live streams. That's what I have so far as far as planning ahead. So if that's something you're into, hopefully by the time this video is up, I'll have at least the bones of a Patreon set up and linked so that so you can join the Discord server if that's something you might want to do. Okay, so let me like just summarize that. So hopefully by the time this video is up, I'll have a Patreon, a very basic Patreon set up so that I can link my Discord server and then we can plan more from there. I think that's the best to not bite off more than we can chew at the moment. If you've watched all the way to the end here, cool, thanks. Um, You did it. Thank you. 
if you want to you can like and subscribe and comment and turn on the bell and um all the other things that youtubers tell you to do i am not telling you to do it though you can do whatever you want but if you want to do that i won't stop you okay bye